So when we create a feature on the surface of silicon wafers, we want to change the nature of the wafer in this feature. We can do this using one of two ways, either ion implantation or diffusion. So when we talked about photolithography, we talked about how we can open a certain area uh, of the oxide and reach the wafer through this oxide. We can then change the nature of the wafer in this area. So let's, for example, assume that we have a P-type wafer and we have created an opening through uh, the photoresist and the oxide. And then we want to change the exposed area of uh, the wafer into N-type or N-plus type or even P-plus type. We can do this by introducing dopants to this area. If we want to change it to a heavily doped P-type, we introduce acceptors. If you want to change it to N-type or N-plus type, we introduce donors. The amount of dopants we introduce, the length of time we expose the wafer to these dopants will determine the concentration we end up with. Now, when we create areas with uh, differential doping, we usually do so uh, for one of three reasons, either to create sources and drains of MOSFETs or to create contacts for the body and the well, or to create a well or tub where we, where, where we create uh, the PMOS transistors in a single well process or both kinds of transistors in a double well process. Uh, there's a difference between creating contacts and sources and drains on the one hand and wells on the other hand, which is that when we take a look at design rules, we will find out that uh, sources and drains are very fine. They are fine features. Uh, they're also heavily doped. So we need to highly control the uh, dimensions of sources and drains and to also highly control uh, their level of doping. Wells, on the other hand, tend to be very big and therefore there's a lot of um, tolerance in how we create them. In any case, uh, one way in which we can introduce dopants into the wafer is called ion implantation. So it's basically we are going to expose the uh, surface of the wafer to uh, ions and these ions are going to implant into the wafer, uh, changing its nature. So let's take a look at the overall setup for ion implantation. Uh, in this case, we have a source of uh, ions. This source of ions produces very low energy ions at the output. So these ions, when they exit the ion gun that is generating them, uh, they are moving at a very low velocity. Now, we expose these ions to a very high electric field uh, by applying a potential source across a tube. This electric field will uh, cause the ions to accelerate. The ions are in air, which means that they are mobile. When situated in an electric field, the electric field will expose them to a force. This force will cause them to accelerate. Now, they will exit the, uh, this tube at a high velocity. They will then enter a chamber and this chamber has a magnetic field. Magnetic fields do not accelerate free charges. Instead, they expose these free charges to bending or to you know skewing in their path. The amount of bending that a charge will experience as it goes through a magnetic field depends on its energy so that um, so that particles with very high energy will uh, experience less bending than particles with lower energy. So we also have an opaque screen which stops uh, ions from passing through it, uh, except for an area where there is a slit. This area where there is a slit will only allow electron, uh, ions that have bent in a certain way to go through. But we already said that the amount of bending is a function of uh, the energy of electrons. And so the slit would only allow a certain profile of energy to pass through it. So only ions with a certain amount of energy will pass through the slit. Now, this is the wafer and this is its cross section and we are exposing it to the ions that are passing through uh, the slit. Uh, the ions will uh, accelerate towards the wafer and they will hit its surface 
where they will not actually rest at the surface, but they will bury to a certain depth. So the, if we look at um, a graph where the y-axis is the depth at which the ions settle and the x-axis is the dopant concentration that we create, then the mean of the dopant uh, profile that we create will depend on the mean of uh, the energy of the particles that we accelerate towards the wafer. Um, the variance or spread of this uh, dopant profile will depend on how wide the slit is and how selective the magnetic field is. There's a couple of questions about this setup. Uh, first of all, why do we have to generate ions uh, from, the, from the gun? Why not generate free uh, atoms, for example? And the answer is when we have ions, ions are charged. This allows us to accelerate them through the electric field and to bend them through the magnetic field. Atoms are electrically neutral and they will just remain where they are forming a vapor of the material and nothing will happen. Uh, the second question is, once these ions embed in the substrate, will they not cause a net charge on the wafer? And the answer is, of course, they will uh, build up a static charge because they are ions, but the wafer will be grounded at some point, and when it is connected to ground, the ions will attract uh, or uh, push electrons through ground so that the wafer becomes electrically neutral again. So uh, this is only a transient thing that we have ions instead of atoms. Now, uh, iron implantation in itself is a low temperature process, which is good. We always want to do things in a cool environment because heating can change uh, the nature of some of the features that we have already created. However, the problem with iron implantation is that when we uh, accelerate the ions into the crystal structure like this, what they will do is that they will push aside uh, silicon atoms along the way before they settle in their location. Uh, this disturbs the crystal structure of the wafer and it creates micro cracks in the crystal. We have to heal these micro cracks and the process that heals them is a process called annealing. Annealing is a process in which we heat the wafer and we heat it to a very high temperature. It's a temperature close to but not too close to the melting uh, point of silicon. So what we are doing is we are almost melting the wafer, but not exactly. This allows the bonds between silicon atoms to relax um, and gives some kind of fluidity to the, uh, to the wafer. Then we start cooling the whole setup really slowly. And when we do this, we allow the atoms to recon uh, reconfigure so that they heal these uh, cracks. Now, annealing only happens if heating is very sudden and cooling is very slow. And annealing is a requirement after iron implantation and it happens at a very high temperature, which is important to recall when we look at how we create MOSFET gates. Now, the alternative way to create features on the surface of a wafer is through diffusion. And diffusion is the natural process by which atoms move uh, from high concentration to a low concentration. So in this case, we, are, uh, we have a setup where we are in a quartz tube and we inlet a gas or a mixture of gases that contain the dopants we want to introduce. And we have a uh, carrier which is carrying multiple wafers at the same time. What's happening here is that these wafers, if we look at them, uh, have exposed areas. There's a high concentration of dopants in the environment. These dopants will diffuse and form a feature into the surface of, of the wafers. Uh, diffusion is a process that needs some degree of heating. Uh, but it is wrong to say that diffusion is uh, bad because it needs heating, while iron implantation is good because it, it doesn't need heating. In fact, while iron implantation itself doesn't need heating, annealing needs heating to a much higher temperature than diffusion. So in fact, if we have to pick one of these two, um, we, have, we, we have to pick uh, diffusion in terms of its uh, temperature profile. The problem with diffusion is that it creates features which are not very fine. So um, the dimensions are not highly controlled and the level of doping is not as highly controlled as in ion implantation.
Um, so it cannot be used to form fine features like sources and drains, but it can be used to form very large wells because they already have uh, design rules which are uh, very large.